Hey, thanks for clicking on my video. If this video helps you, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. It is greatly appreciated and it really helps. Let's get to the video. Let's talk about extraneous solutions in rational equations. So first of all, what is an extraneous solution? Well, it's just an apparent solution. So we do everything right, we solve the equation, we get the solution. Uh, but once we check that solution in our original equation, it actually produces a false result. So we would say it's extraneous, right? It, it seemed to be right, but when we checked it further, it actually was not correct. And that's what we're gonna deal with today with rational equations. So if we think about that in terms of rational equations, notice that we have variables in our denominators, right? So there's certain numbers that we can't plug in for x because if we did, it would give us a denominator of zero and we know that's undefined. So in the event that we have a number that we plug in for x and it gives us zero in the denominator, whatever number we plugged in for x, that's gonna be our extraneous solution. So let's dive right in and look at our example here. So the first thing we want to do is find our least common denominator. Well, we notice that we have a couple special products here in our denominator, x squared minus nine and x squared minus six x plus nine. So if I factor those out, four x over, this would be x plus three times x minus three, right? That's our difference of two squares. It factors as the sum and difference pattern. Now for our next denominator, we would say, we have x squared minus six x plus nine. I notice that is a perfect square trinomial because if I take my b value negative six and I divide it by two, we get negative three. And then when we square that, we get nine. So I know that would factor as x minus three quantity squared. So x minus three, because we had minus six x there, and that's a perfect square trinomial, so it factors as the square of a binomial. And then we have our other piece over here, two over x plus three. So now let's look at our factors in the denominator and let's find our least common denominator. Well, we have x minus three listed as two factors. So that needs to be two factors in our least common denominator. And then we have also a factor of x plus three. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and multiply both sides of our equation by that least common denominator. So I'm gonna put parentheses around both sides and let's multiply by x minus three quantity squared and x plus three. So we'll do that to both sides here, and now we'll multiply. So starting over here on the left, notice that this x plus three will cancel with this x plus three, and one of the x minus threes will cancel. So we still have a factor of x minus three here that we need to multiply to four x. So let's write four x times x minus three, and we'll simplify that here in just a minute. Now on the right side, we have two separate uh, rational expressions um, combined as a sum. And so let's focus on this first one first, and then we'll do the second one later. So notice here, we're gonna cancel out both of our factors of x minus three. So we're gonna be left with x minus one times x plus three. Okay, now I'm gonna erase these markings here because now I want to use, once again, my least common denominator, but now let's multiply it by two over x plus three. So now we see x plus three, x plus three, that'll cancel. So we just multiply two times x minus three quantity squared. So plus two times three, or two times x minus three quantity squared. So now let's go ahead and simplify. So four x squared minus 12 x is equal to, now we can foil here x squared plus two x minus three, and then plus, and this would be two times, and we know x minus three quantity squared is the trinomial that we saw at the beginning. So x squared minus six x plus nine. Okay, so now we have four x squared minus 12 x on the left side. And let's go with x squared plus two x minus three. And now let's distribute this two. So plus two x squared minus 12 x and plus 18. Once again, four x squared minus 12 x on the left side. As you can see, I'm going step by step here, but you could condense some of these steps and do them at the same time. We have one x squared and two x squared, so that'd be three x squared. We have a two x and a negative 12 x, so minus 10 x. We have a negative three and an 18, so plus 15. Now let's move the negative, or let's move three x squared and negative 10 x to the other side by doing the opposite. And we're gonna move the 15 over as well, but I really don't have a place to put it right now. So I could write it like this and just put it out here on the side. Um, and now we're canceling everything on the right side because I notice this is a quadratic, so let's set it equal to zero. So four x squared minus three x squared would be x squared. 
negative 12x plus 10x would be minus 2x, and then we have this minus 15, and that's equal to zero. So now let's see if we can factor this. Um, what adds to negative two and multiplies to negative 15? Well, that's gonna give us x minus five times x plus three. So using the zero product property, we can set each of those equal to zero and get x is equal to five and x is equal to negative three. So these are our two apparent solutions. So now what we should do is take them and plug them in to each of our initial, or into our initial equation. Okay, so now we are gonna be able to quickly see that we really don't have to plug them in because one of them is clearly gonna make our denominator zero. So if I look at five and I plug five in for x here, 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 and here, notice that nowhere along there am I gonna get a value of zero. Well, for negative three, if I plug in negative three right here, negative three plus three is zero, right? So that's gonna give me undefined. So we're gonna say that x is equal to negative three would be our extraneous solution, okay? So the extraneous solution is negative three. Our only actual solution to this rational equation would be x is equal to five. So that's how you can identify some extraneous solutions in rational equations.